Hi everyone and welcome back to another fun and exciting episode of the Botanis Garden Club. I'm Pam and I'm Wendy and we're so glad to have you here to talk about daffodils. Now is it daffodils or narcissi? What is it? Well, I guess it's like potato, potato, it's whatever you whatever the you same want it. Thing. They're the same thing. Good. Exactly. Daffodil is the common name for the Latin named variety of plant called Narcissi. Good, let's get Narcissi. that straight. <laughs> exactly. So you can refer to them, most people actually refer to them as daffodils, it really is the common name. Um, but really, whether, whether you call it Narcissi or daffodil, we don't care as long as you plant some in your garden. Where do they come from? You know, it's interesting. A lot of bulbs, well, bulbs aren't usually mm -hmm. native to North America. There are some, but very, very few. But daffodils are native to the Mediterranean, uh, to northern Spain, uh, Spain to right. parts of Portugal. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, we were talking about this beforehand, and Wendy said, well, yeah, if they're native to the Mediterranean in Spain, like, how can they grow here in Canada? Well, they're native to the mountainous regions. So they do get a very cold winter in those northern parts of, uh, of Spain and uh, into the Mediterranean as and well. And wet springs, don't yes. we all know about that? Mm -hmm. We have those wet springs that match that completely and dry summers. I and dry think. summers. So mm -hmm. that is a very important thing. Good draining soil, dry summer, lots of uh, wetness in the spring. So really, truly ideal for Canadian yeah, climate. Sounds like us, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> and I mean, I guess the question is, if you've never planted daffodils before, and if you have, well, you'll know what we're talking mm -hmm. about, but if you haven't, why would you even, why would you even plant daffodils? Oh. What, what's the point? There are so many different reasons for planting daffodils. All of us, or at least I and most of us here can remember, when we were kids growing up, what did we see? We saw daffodils. That was sort of the harbinger of spring. You mm -hmm. knew spring was coming again when you saw a daffodil. And there are so many different varieties of daffodils. We've got a couple right here. There are small daffodils, like this little rock garden one. Look how tiny that is. Beautiful example of a bulb, but it is smaller. And then you'll see this beautiful King Alfred. I mean, I mm -hmm. love the look of these, don't you, yeah, Pam? These great. lovely papery skins. So these are two beautiful, big sizes of daffodils. Mm -hmm. So you can't be concerned when you get this and think, oh, what happened? This is the biggest size this comes in, and this is the one of the larger sizes of this King, Daffod King Alfred daffodil as well. And everything they need to grow is right inside here. They just need a great situation to be planted in. Right. So there's something for everybody in the daffodil world. Mm -hmm. I really believe you can find something in your garden. And we're talking about the versatility of daffodils. I mean, mm -hmm. not only do they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, not just yellow, We've got pink, oh we have white, we orange. have apricot, orange, Doubles. yes, orange and yellow. I mean, yeah. it just goes on and on and on. But one of the wonderful things about daffodils is you can actually plant ones that will bloom early in the season, early in the spring, That's ones right. that will bloom mid-season, and ones that will bloom late, so that you can have a wonderful succession of flowers, not just, woo, you know, here's early spring and I've got lots of yellow daffs, and then it just kind of fades away. Probably one of the most popular and favorite early blooming is the King Alfred oh, type such a of daffodil. Yes. Uh, any of the large trumpet daffodils, those are the ones, as you were talking about before, the, the, they bring on memories of your childhood. They're bright yellow and sometimes they're white and, and yellow, but the King Alfred really is the, 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 the atypical, Absolutely. or the typical, sorry, daffodil for early spring blooms and uh, a wonderful one to plant and as you mentioned these bulbs are nice and big and they just and feel heavy. good they're heavy they just they go in the ground really well I mean they're just a great bulb to plant yeah. now we're moving into the mid season what mid -season. types would we uh, find there oh there are so many to choose from and the one that I'd like to talk about specifically that grows mid season is the bridal crown it's got a lot of double petals in it it has a beautiful white flower, mostly white, and mm -hmm. with these little ripples of the sort of butterscotch color petal going through it. They're super fragrant, mm -hmm. which you can find in the early, mid, and late daffodils. Mm -hmm. there are, I think all daffodils smell a little bit. They do, but, but the poet has these oh. ones, the bridal crown, it's a variety. They are very, very fragrant, mm -hmm. and, and just uh, they just seem to exude it, even though the flowers themselves are actually quite tiny. It's surprising what kind mm -hmm. of fragrance comes off them. So that's a great mid, mid variety. Now, what about a late one? Yeah, now the late one, uh, I would choose Poeticus oh, recurvus. Yeah. It is an heirloom bulb, which means it's been around on the market for over 50 years. In fact, it's been around for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And I really love it because it's just so different looking, and it blooms late. Mm -hmm. 
crystal white petals and then it has this little tiny cup that's rimmed with red. Which is why some people might refer to it as mm -hmm. pheasant's eye. That's yes. what's the common name. That's the common name, mm -hmm. correct. Now it is a beautiful flower. It uh, blooms just as easily as all of the other ones, but it is a little different looking. It's not your sort of traditional trumpet daffodil, but it's great because it blooms late. So late season, if you choose, it. you know, some King Alfred, some of those bridal mm -hmm. crowns, a poeticus recurvus, you're going to have a lovely succession of blooms throughout the spring. And you know what's really wonderful about daffodils too is they are deer resistant. Now that means that they're going to be able to sort of naturalize even better in your garden because it doesn't have a real natural uh, enemy or predator. Mm -hmm. And they, it's because there's something in here that's alkaline and they don't like it at all. Mm -hmm. And that is a great reason for planting them. That's a, a very situation that a lot of us encounter in our gardens. Mm -hmm. So that is one really great reason to plant daffodils mm -hmm. as well, I think. Yeah. And they multiply well. Yes. Super and, and probably fast. one of the reasons they multiply fast is because nobody's eaten them. <laughs> <laughs> we think so. That's right. And also because they are because this plant actually, this little bulb here, mm -hmm. will sit in the ground, set roots, and what's going to happen is it's going to produce more and more and more of these. Mm -hmm. So the multiplication of these, and the fact that you only have to plant a few, and in a few years we'll have a nice big clump of them that spreads. That's right. a great, wonderful thing yeah. about the daffodils. They're easy care. I mean, that really is, a, is, a, is really the basic fact of daffodils. So true. They are easy care. So if you have never planted flower bulbs before, daffodils I would think would be the first one to choose yeah. because there are so many different types and they're very, very easy to, to care for. You need to just put them in a, a well-draining spot mm -hmm. or in a container that drains well. Good and point. you were mentioning earlier a little, you know, a little tip you yes. had about how to find out, well, how do I know if I have a, a good draining flower bed? What you do is plant a nice, or dig a nice big hole and then fill it with water. Now if you, the water drains quickly, quite quickly, then you have a great place to plant your bulbs. If it doesn't drain so quickly, you need to either amend the soil or mm -hmm. find a different place to plant. Mm -hmm. You can amend the soil by adding gravel to it, mm -hmm. adding coarse sand, the cocoa fiber is mm -hmm. a, a great additive as well. Right. There's also peat moss mm -hmm. and also great organic mulch and compost mm -hmm. aged. That really adds to the friability, the real looseness of the soil allows the water to drain away, mm -hmm. which will keep those bulbs safe throughout right. the winter. Because the number one enemy of bulbs, mm -hmm. daffodils, narcissi, in fact any type of bulbs, is water retentive soil. So we always say drainage, drainage, drainage. That's number one when planting your bulbs. And another interesting thing that we have discovered ourselves through you know, practice, but also talking with many, many customers, is that if you plant your bulbs deeper, you will have great effects come the spring and following years. Mm -hmm. And one of the main reasons is, is that when you plant a bulb deeper, you're planting it, um, you're protecting it in many ways, not only because it's getting lower in the soil uh, and it's got a lot more pressure on it, which, which actually helps to... Uh, Stops the bulb from splitting and right. creating another baby, which actually drains the energy from the exactly. mom. But what's really important about planting deeper is the way our seasons are going. And not just in one part of Canada, but most parts of Canada, our winter lingers a little bit longer. And then we have a little shot of spring, a couple of days where we're wearing shorts and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the cold comes back. Mm -hmm. Well, that does affect a bulb that's planted too close to the surface mm -hmm. because it can feel that warmth and it may start to grow. Mm -hmm. And if it starts to grow and then another cold spell hits, a real long snap, it does sort of burn the top of that little bud that's starting to come out. Right. So plant deeper to avoid mm -hmm. that. It works yeah. very, very well. Yeah, and in colder parts of Canada as well, if you're in a zone three, like in Saskatchewan or Alberta, Manitoba, parts of Northern Ontario, mm -hmm. planting deeper is also a wonderful idea. And the reason is, if you happen to have a dry winter, and you don't know whether you're gonna have a dry winter, it may come, may not, but if you do have a dry winter, that means that 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 insulating blanket of snow is not there to protect yeah. those bulbs. So they would be affected by mm -hmm. that additional cold and planting deeper will certainly help with that situation. Now something we want to talk about today too is letting them die back. We, we all know that the, the thought is that it doesn't look so lovely when they're dying back. But you know what, it's crucial for every uh, daffodil bulb to have its chance to bloom and then for that mm -hmm. foliage to die back. So what you can do is nip off that little seed head that comes after the flower blooms, mm -hmm. but you must let those leaves, which are the solar panel 
die back. Mm -hmm. They have to have that whole process and what that process does is feeds the bulb underground, allows it to set roots and produce a flower next year. So no braiding, no mm -hmm. tying, you must let it die right. back naturally. So I think that's what we should call our tip of the week this that's week. That's a great idea. We'll call it the tip of the week. Make sure that you allow the foliage, the plant, to die back naturally before you cut off that foliage. It doesn't take very long. No. It's, you know, it's just a short little while when they're, when they're yellow, but it is crucial, crucial, we can't stress it enough, in order to get the flower to come back again mm -hmm. the following season. Yes. Now, so I want to know, um, what's your favorite? Oh, well, good question. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there are literally hundreds of daffodils, and uh, being who I am, I'm always, you know, oh, this is my fave, or oh, that's my fave. But this season, I actually chose one of mm -hmm. my faves. It's listed on our website yes. and in the catalog as well. It's called My Story. I'm always drawn to uh, flowers that kind of look a little bit quirky, a little unusual. This one is simply gorgeous. You love it's, a flower with a story. That's right, <laughs> and it's my story. No, it's not my personal story, but I love it. It's got these creamy white petals, the sort of apricot mixed in. It doesn't quite look like a narcissi or a daffodil, but it really does. It's just, it's just one of those really unusual novelty narcissi, mm -hmm. and I love it. So um, hopefully you love it too, and order some to plant in, in your garden this year. My favorite is Pippet. Okay, I chose that last year. Yeah. Okay, it's so beautiful. It's like a lemon yellow and white. And what is beautiful about it, as the season progresses, it almost goes to a full white. I can sit and have my coffee in the morning and watch it out there in the rain do so beautifully mm -hmm. well, going for that bright color that's a spot in the garden, like a spot of light, and then changing to white over the weeks that it's blooming. And they bloom a long time because mm -hmm. they are blooming when it's very cool outside. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot of heat out there to sort of ruin those petals early. And right. so mine is Pippet. We know that Elka loves mm -hmm. Irene Copeland. That's mm -hmm. her favorite this year. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If she hadn't taken it, I probably would have. It's a gorgeous mm -hmm. flower. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Lots of double uh, shredded petals yeah. inside. Oh, yeah. beautiful. So there's so many to choose from, but we want to know which one is your fave. So that's our question of the week. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. <laughs> that's right. We want to know which daffodil, which narcissi is your absolute favorite. And tell us why as well. There might be a story behind it. it might be your story behind mm -hmm. it. It was something that your grandmother grew or something. Oh gosh, I don't know. There's a million and one reasons, but we'd love to hear what your favorite daffodil is. So please do tell us. Send that in to Garden Club at Botanis.com <laughs> and we're going to draw three lucky winners to mm -hmm. receive three bags, one bag each, mm -hmm. of the Golden Echo. Yeah. And it is a lovely, beautiful daffodil. Yeah. It kind of reminds me oh. of a uh, pippet. It's, uh, it's a one that has white petals and it sort of fades into a yellow uh, trumpet. It's a rock garden narcissi, beautiful mid-season uh, bloomers. So yes. You get to try out those mid-season blooms. And uh, we're going to be drawing that uh, tomorrow. Right. So, yeah. so get those uh, answers in for us. We'll love to hear from you. And thank you so much for joining us again today. We love doing this. We hope you learned about the Narcissi daffodil. We've had a lot of fun. We certainly have. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.